Hi everyone. My name is Dr. Hani. I am a senior lecturer from University of Malaysia Sabah. Today I am going to talk about nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. At the end of this module, you will enable to learn what are the differences between nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. What are the causes, cardinal features and complications of each syndrome and how to diagnose and manage the different cases. So please remember the first scenario and second scenario. To begin with, scenario 1, a 12 year old girl presented with face swelling, letter G. On history, there is no systemic symptoms except patient complaint of frothy urine. On examination, there is a periorbital edema, facial puffiness. Temperature normal, vital signs are all normal. Investigation, urine dipstick show protein 3 plus. Blood investigations are normal. So what is the most probable diagnosis and how to manage this case? Case scenario two. A 30-year-old lady presented with dark color urine for the past two days. She was well until 13 days ago while she was having a fever and sore throat, which is a URTI. Urine district showed hematuria, RBC 3 plus, protein 2 plus. FEME, urine FEME, RBC cast are seen. Blood investigation is normal, except ASO theater is pretty high. So, what is the provisional diagnosis. It is nephrotic or nephritic. Before we move on to the uh, investigation and management, you have to understand what are the difference in pathophysiology for nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is caused by damage to glomerulus, subsequently causes an increased capillary permeability of glomerular basement membrane. Basically, nephrotic glomerulus is formed by capillaries with the small pores that allow only small modules. So, this is the afferent RTVO. This is the glomerulus and make up with the capillaries. In the capillary, there are small pores are there. When the blood is coming through the afferent RTVO and reach to the glomerular capillaries, the small pores will filter the small molecular weight proteins, which are low molecular weight, minimal protein, and electrolytes, sodium, potassium, H+. They will be filtered through the small pores into the Bowman capsule. This is the Bowman capsule. It will receive all the filter blood, which is a which end up in the tubule and which is called urine formations. Whichever are not filtered through this glomerulus will be returned back to the blood through the efferent RTVO. So in nephrotic syndrome, as the pores are increased in the size, so the more than small molecular weight protein, which are albumin will be lost in the urine, antithromine will be lost in the urine, immunoglobulin and others protein, high molecular weight protein will also be lost in the urine. As because of uh, albumin and all the proteins are lost in the urine, patient will have a uh, hypoalbuminemia will be there in the nephrotic syndrome case. Why, on the other hand, in the nephritic syndrome is caused by immune response happen in the glomerulus, especially triggered by the infection or other systemic conditions. Once the inflammation process is happened in the glomerulus, it will affect the function of the glomerulus. So, which function is affected is uh, normally no blood is appear in your urine. But now, because of the inflammatory process in the glomerulus, when the efferent arterial blood is carried up, and it will be blood will be filtered in your urine, and you will have a hematuria in the nephritic syndrome. So, basically, proteins more protein are lost in nephritic and blood is lost in the nephritic syndrome because of the immune complex reaction in the nephritic syndrome. <clears throat> First, let's start with the 3C. Number 1C is the causes. What are the causes of nephrotic and nephritis? In the causes, there is a two cause, primary and secondary cause. 
the primary cause is caused by the, the disease origin from the glomerular issues. Why secondary cause is the glomerular disease secondary to the systemic causes. So in the nephritic syndrome, according to the age group, minimal change disease is the most common cause of nephritic syndrome in young children, while focus sclerosis and membranous nephropathy is common in the adult patients. For the glomerulonephritis, for the younger age, post-infectious streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a commonest cause, while in the adult group, IgA nephropathy is a commonest cause of the mild glomerulonephritis. If patient is uh, having a moderate to severe glomerulonephritis, it can be a MBGN, which is a mesangial proliferative glomerulonephritis or RBGN. If patient is a young female patient and got the connective tissue disease, then you have to think about the lupus nephritis as well. And other uh, common causes are vasculitis causes like cryoglobulinemia. So let's move on to the secondary causes, which are the systemic causes. Systemic causes like a drug-induced glomerular, glomerular disease, nephrotic syndrome caused by NSAID, gold, penicillamine, healthy metal injection, infection, very common, HIV, hepatitis B, C. Systemic diseases, sarcoidosis, diabetics, multiple myeloma, malignancy, lymphoma. In glomerular nephritis, basically it's a vasculitic causes such as autoimmune vasculitis, vaginal glomerulonephritis, microscopic bowling angitis, hinoscholing, SLE, Chastros syndrome. So um, when you are looking for the uh, nephrotic and nephritic uh, causes, investigation, if you are thinking of uh, secondary causes of the glomerulonephritis, you have to investigate the HIV serology, hepatitis B serology, for diabetic of uh, fasting blood sugar level or hemoglobin A1C level, multiple myeloma, you have to do the earring electrophoresis, you have to rule out the malignant conditions in different organs. Lymphoma is another possible diagnosis, so lymph node biopsy if patient got the lymph lymphadenopathy and to rule out the Vasculitic causes, you have to do the ANA, antibody, complement level for SLE, anti double stranded and anti smith For vaginal chest drop, you have to do the anchor investigations. So let's start with the number 1C, which is uh, finished already, and number 2C, which is the cardinal features. What are the cardinal differences uh, features in the nephrotic and nephritic? It depends on the pathophysiology. Pathophysiology, more protein is lost in the nephrotic syndrome. So, cardinal feature number one is a massive proteinuria. Proteinuria, because of massive proteinuria, albumin also lost in the urine, which causes a hypoalbuminemia in the blood. Because of albumin is a onco major oncotic pressure that maintain the fluid in the intravascular space. But now, as albumin is lost in the urine, it cannot maintain the fluid in your intravascular space and the fluid will be accumulated in the interstitial space, So, which causes the generalized edema. And another feature of is a hyperlipidemia in the nephrotic syndrome. And for the nephritis syndrome, as the, your, your glomerular inflammation uh, causes uh, blood to be lost in the urine. Patient will have a hematuria and RBC cast. And because of the immune complex reaction in the glomerulus, um, hypertension will be happening in the nephritic syndrome patients. Proteinuria is not the nephrotic range, which is more than 3 grams, which will be more than 2 grams per day. Because of the protein loss, no less oncotic pressure in the intravascular space and causes a generalized tissue edema. And patient can end up in the uremia or oliguria as well. Other features are, as you see in the picture, periorbital edema is very common in the kidney cases because periorbital space is the 
most less tissue resistant space in the body so the fluid are tend to accumulate uh, starting at the periorbital space followed by other fluid accumulation in the state space such as a pre-effusion, ascites, pedodemus are common as well. And patient will have complaint of a fatigue, lethargy, tiredness, malleus. Flank pain is also common in the nephritic syndrome patients because of the immune complex reaction in the glomerulus. Number 3C which is a complication of the nephrotic syndrome. Because of urinary loss of the immunoglobulin, globulin is a protein itself, so which is a function to maintain to prevent the infection. As immunoglobulin is lost, infections are prone to be occur in the nephrotic syndrome. Because of protein loss, the body try to compensate uh, increased lipoprotein synthesis in the liver, so which causes the lipid to be high in the blood and complicated can be premature coronary artery disease and patient can be because of a vitamin D loss in the urine as well and low albumin level patient can be hypocalcemia as well because of the antitromy is one of the protein loss in the urine hypoagulopathy so they might need the DVD prophylaxis if they are immobilized as fluids are accumulated in interstitial tissue and relatively intravascular volume state is low because of low oncotic pressure, patient can be complaining of a hypovolemia or hypovolemic shock as well. Let's move on to the investigation. Investigate the 3C. Confirm the condition. Look for the causes and look for the complication by investigation. So how do you confirm urine distic and urine microscopy? Proteinuria will be 3 plus. Nephrotic range of proteinuria more than 3 grams if you do the 24 hour urine protein level. On the other hand, for, for the nephritic syndrome, there will be RBC cast will be present in the urine. Protein will be minimal amount only and throughout the the cause of a glomerulonephritis, you have to do the renal biopsy to look for what type of glomerulonephritis is it. For nephrotic syndrome, we used to do the urine ACR ratio, which is a albumin creatinine ratio or PCR ratio. If to look for the another number 3C, which is a complication, patient, if patient end up with the acuvenia failure, urea creatinine will be high and GFR may or may not be low. In nephrotic syndrome, just now, hypocalcemia is one of the complications, so calcium level will be low, lipid level will be high, or dyslipidemia will be happen in nephrotic cases. For the nephritic syndrome, urea and creatinine also have to do to look for complications. And to look for the causes, as I mentioned to you, all the vasculitis causes, you have to rule out by doing the complement level, anti double stranded DNA, anti smid anti-nuclear, antibody, anti-cytoplasmic antibody. And post streptococcal chrononephritis patient, you will find out the ASO theta will be peak up to the 3 to 5th week of onset. How do you manage a patient in the nephrotic patient and nephritic patient? Manage the 3C. Manage the causes, manage the condition of the patient and manage the complications. For the conservative management, as patient is having the fluid overload, then you have to do the salt and water retention. Uh, salt and water restriction, sorry. So, have to restrict the sodium intake less than 3 gram per day, restrict the fluid intake less than 1.5 liter per day. And less patient got uh, renal failure, then you have to restrict less than 500 ml per day. For nephrotic syndrome patient, patient will have a hyperlipidemia, so you have to restrict the fat intake as well. For the medical treatment, as patient is having fluid overload, you can start using the diuretics. But make sure patient not uh, are complicated with hypovolemic shock. Diuretics such as a frusamide, spironolactone, thiazide, you can use in both cases. Another major uh, drug is the ACEI or ARB. 
ACR or ARB is one of the common antihypertensive which can be used in the nephritic syndrome as nephritic syndrome cardinal feature is a hypertension. And for the nephrotic syndrome, the indication for usage of an ACER is to prevent the progressive proteinuria. Another complication that we use it in the, in the nephrotic and nephritic syndromes are steroids and other immunosuppressant drugs such as cyclophosphamide, cyclosporine, mycophenolate, IVIGG2 suppress the immune complex reaction to suppress antibody, to kill the antibody. In nephrotic syndrome, infection is, as infection is very prone to be happen, you better start using the pneumococcal vaccination, immunization. And for the dyslipidemia, you have to use the statin as well. After the medications and if patient got number 3C, which is a complicated with acute renal failure, then patient might need the dialysis in both cases. Alright. Thank you so much.